Hi everybody, welcome back to Shell Star Stitches. Hope you're all okay and have had a good week um, and happy Easter to those of you that celebrate or don't celebrate or enjoy the bank holidays. Um, I will be sitting eating some chocolate eggs for sure. Um, hope, you're, yeah, hope you're all enjoying some time off if you don't work bank holidays. Um, apologies if you do. Um, so yeah, this week, what has happened? So we, I have finally finished my King um, crochet doll, um, which yeah, I'm sure I haven't shown you the finished piece. Um, so I've got that to show you. I've also got to show you um, what I'm currently working on at the moment. I've had one delivery and I've made some other orders and purchases and I've got a little bit of sewing to show you, um, something that I I did this morning. So um, let's start with the crochet. Um, so yes, the king is all finished. I didn't do every single piece of the pattern. I left out the scepter and orb that he holds um, because I knew I'd probably have to sew those onto his hands because otherwise they'd just keep falling over. So I left those out. And also there was a little bit of a chain detail that I decided to leave out. Um, but he's done. So I'm gonna try and hold him up without him losing anything because he's a bit top heavy. So let's try and keep him all in shot. Here he is. So he's got a green sash there, if you can see it. Green sash, and he's got some, these are supposed to be French knots, but I can't do French knots. So some buttons on his jacket. He does actually have one up under there, under his sash, if you can see it. Um, he's got little, see his head's top heavy. <laughs> he's got, let me hold him this way, but let me hold him by the neck. Um, he's got some little detailing there and on the side of his trousers. Um, then obviously we have the, they call it a robe, but when we did the queen, it was her mantle. Oh, see, he's losing his hat, his crown. So that's all done. Um, I didn't realise that I left a whole piece off of this because I thought the white went at the bottom, not at the top. So I had to go back and do that. He's got his ears, which I think are quite appropriate for our King Charles. And I've done a toff style nose rather than, and no mouth. Um, so he's similar to the Queen. And then his crown here. So we've got the ball and the orb on the top. And I have put, as you can see, little focus, little gems around the little um, acrylic beads I've put on instead of doing the colours um, for his crown. And I have, I'll take his, his crown off so you can see. Um, I don't know if you can see under there. I've put Toft modelling wire in to help it with the shape. Because otherwise, see that's a bit squished. It fell down the stairs a second ago, the crown. Um, I felt it wasn't getting the right sort of crown shape, um, just from being loose, if that made sense. So I popped in some modelling wire, which I can obviously keep moving around because every time his crown falls off, it gets a bit squished. Um, so yeah, so that is the crown. It's very difficult to get the right shape, you know, and then you get the right shape and then you drop it down the stairs. Um, <laughs> and I kind of didn't want the modelling wire to show, so I've tried to do it so from the front you can't see it, twist it slightly. Um, but yeah, and he has, I put, gave him grey hair rather than cream, just because I feel he's, he's not quite got white hair, is he? He's got a bit of grey in it, so... There we go. King is all, he's a bit wonk. I did put something in his head, but there we go. He's all done. So he's been standing up next to my Toft Queen doll upstairs. So they're there together with her mini Corgi. So that's the free pattern um, by Make Me Raw Designs. His hat's just fallen off again already. It's like he's a bit drunk. Um, so I'll pop a link in, so it's a free pattern on Hobbycraft. Um, that you can make. And that's all with Toft yarn, I've done that. So it's amethyst, yellow, cream, red, uh, sapphire, and green, and oatmeal for the skin tone. Um, so delivery this week, I it's not kind of a delivery, I went to collect. So um, I messaged Bryony at Spectrum Fibre because um, my March club was ready. She's been madly dying a load of pre-orders that she did so that basically her advent um everyone loved the colors so she's been re-dyeing those i think she said 1200 mini skeins mad woman <laughs> so my march is um 
club yarn was ready so I went to go and collect that on Wednesday um, so this one is called I'm hiding it for a second patisserie daydream um, and this is the colorway so really lovely sort of cool green tones with a bit of sort of neon in there we've got some pinks and some oranges and a little bit of purple really pleased with that it does remind me of sort of some sort of really nice cake that you might eat with some delicious buttercream icing on the top um so yeah really pleased with that so that's marches um that i've collected i've had an email that my woolly mama's april is on the way already um i don't know if i told you last week yeah i think i did i've also signed up for the woolly mama's advent i told you that last week um I've also placed an order with Weeku Yarns because at the moment they've got a sale on. So if you put in code SALE20, SALE20, um, they're trying to clear their decks of all their in-stock yarn at the moment. So you'll get 20% off. Um, they're, doing, they're moving on to do something slightly different. We don't know what yet, um, but they're basically clearing. They need all the space, so they're clearing the stock that they've got left. So I did pop an order in there. I did also order from Siobhan's craft yesterday. She did an update. Um, I got up late and I didn't watch the update um, Saturday night. I watched it Sunday morning. Um, so one of the items I may have bought um, was out of stock. But I managed to get, um, it was an Easter egg with some Easter themed yarn. And one skein of yarn I've ordered. So that's coming. Also to let you know, Toft have their Easter weekend on at the moment. It finishes, I think, tomorrow, either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. So I would go on there today. It's their traditional Easter egg hunt. So there are five eggs that you can find. Um, so um, Kerry has put this on her Instagram already, so there shouldn't be any spoilers for any of you. Um, so if you do want to skip forward a little bit, I'm just going to run through what they are. So the first one is um, a free pattern for um, a bird called Callista. Um, that's going to be their cow, I think it's Princess Callista, something like that. Um, they're going to do a crochet along from the 24th of April for that. You can buy it as a kit on their website, with or without beads, but you can go and get the pattern for free. That's one of the Easter eggs. Um, another Easter egg is 50% off the Sheep magazine. I think there's about 14 patterns in the Sheep magazine. The third one is for a flyer for a discount code. They do this every year. So the discount code comes and it's for orders after the Easter weekend. And I think up until about the 8th or 10th of May, you get, I think, 10% off a future order. That's three. Um, what was number four? Oh, number four um, was, these might be in a different order, by the way, free patterns. So there's definitely going to be two flower monster pa mini flower monster patterns that are the same. I can't for the life of me remember what they are. I'll pop a link. Um, so two mini flower monster ones and two others ran picked at random. So everyone will at least get the two flower ones the same. And then the final egg is for a Morag the Highland Cow or Coo patch. Um, you can order all of these things without placing an order if that makes sense. And just pay the 450 shipping so if you didn't want to buy a load of things from toft and you just wanted the free cow patch and it sounds like i'm saying cow pat <laughs> the cow patch um the magazine and everything it'll cost you about 10 pounds to get the magazine the postage get the free patch get the free postcard patterns um and the free pdf for the uh, crochet long so i have placed an order um i've ordered some they've released the new um beads for the uh, pastel yarns a few more so i've ordered some of those um i've also ordered i had to do a second order because i realized i was missing some yarn to do the crochet along that comes up um, with the free pattern and also i want to give ed's imaginists a go so the new colors have been released and it's yellow three yellows a cream and a shale i think it was or charcoal um charcoal I don't have any yellow left. I, I thought I had some of each sort of colour from Toft in my stock and my stash, but I've got no yellow. Um, and I'm a bit hit and miss with some of the, I've got some charcoal, but so I've ordered myself some more yellow yarn and some other coloured yarns as well, just to top up my stash. So, um, and for the crochet along. So those will come at some point. 
Yeah, so yeah, toft Easter weekend. So get in there today if you can. Um, definitely by tomorrow, sort of morning before lunchtime. I'll try and find out and pop in the comments what time it actually runs until. I've got a feeling it's 9am. They do that with a lot of theirs, but um, it did start Thursday afternoon, about four or five o'clock-ish it was. Um, yeah, so that's what, there'll be lots of goodies coming um, for me to show you. Hopefully we'll come by next weekend, uh, but obviously we've had two bank holidays, um, so everything might be a bit delayed. So, right, current project I'm on. So I am doing a um, hexagon cardigan. And the pattern I'm using is from um, Craft and Cupper, Craft and a Cupper, or Craft and Cupper. Again, I will link it. Um, I have picked all my Wiku yarns. So this is one of the yarn packs I created myself. So this is where, I, if you watch my videos regularly, I've gone through my stash and I've put five to six um, hundred grams of yarn together in little I Ikea bags, like sandwich bags. Um, as yarn packs for making jumpers, um, shawls, do you know, sort of making a big project so that they all go together. Um, so I pulled out my Wiku yarn one um, and I am making a hexagon cardigan with it. So this is where we've got to so far. So we're on to, we've joined and we're doing, this is the sleeve, so we're extending the sleeve now. Um, so the colours that we've got here I'll try and hold this up and point at the same time. So this one here is called Insho Ocean. This one here is called Shells. And this one, the darker one around the edge, is Blissful Beach. So as you can tell, Insho Ocean, Shells and Blissful Beach, as she gets tangled up in her yarn. Um, all beachy themed. See, I've pulled out stitches now. No matter how long I pull this, I always end up pulling it out when I'm doing a video. Um, all beachy themed, colourway. So hopefully that will look really nice once done. Um, I'm hopeful this is all I've got left, but I have got one for each um, section, one for each sleeve. Um, so this is all I've got left. So I want to finish the sleeve and try and join in the back with that. So, and maybe even add to the bottom, but we're being hopeful. One of the colours I have ordered on my um, order with um, Wiku is some more of the end show because I only had one end show, two shell and two blissful beach. Um, so I'm doing this with 500 grams at the moment of DK. Um, so what I might do is um, if I need to add some length to it, I might use end show along the bottom um, when it comes. But there you go. So if I show you without pulling this out. You put my arm through it. So there we go. We'll join. We'll do a join with the middle in the back. Um, obviously, I still need to. They're quite wide sleeves for me. Um, so I might try and cuff them. But I quite like a wide sleeve, baggy sleeve. And this is meant to be like a baggy style. Um, so yeah, that is. And then we'll do. I've got the other panel the same. I'm on the sleeve. Just started the sleeve. Um, on that one. I mean, it's not too short, but it could do with being a little bit longer. I prefer them longer. So yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. It's all trebles. It's basically like a granny square. I can't open it now, I'll show you, but it's a hexagon, so you make a hexagon. <laughs> Funny story about that. Um, I asked my hubby, who's very good with these normally, and the conversation after will prove this point to you. I said, oh, hexagons have got five sides, hasn't it? He went, yeah. And so I spent five hours crocheting the two. So I was making sure I did one and did the other to make sure I had enough colour. Then I looked at the pattern and Googled it as well. And I'm like, no, hexagon six. And when I said to him, he was like, well, I wasn't really listening to what you were asking me. It's a typical husband thing, isn't it? Wasn't really paying attention, just answered yes. <laughs> so I spent five hours making these with five sides instead of six, which didn't work because you have the way you have to fold it, make, you need the six sides to make your sleeve. So we had to frog it all and start again, but we did it in the end. So set back by five hours. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. So I'm on sleeve number two, and then I'll go back to this because I'm going to keep going to make sure I've got enough yarn left over. Um, that's crochet. Now, yesterday I decided to go through my wardrobe 
Um, it's one of those jobs I've been needing to do for a while. I do have too many clothes. I couldn't fit any more in the wardrobe. And I've emptied two black bin sacks full and another like um, bag for life bag. And my wardrobe is still full. So I oh, don't know how I fitted anything in there. Um, so I have been quite ruthless. However, there was a coat that I really, really love. Um, and it's from, if you can remember, um, let me hold that up, Dorothy Perkins. Um, absolutely love it. And I haven't worn it that much. It's one of those that's in the cupboard that I love. And, you know, you'll see in a second because it's a fur furry coat. You can't, obviously, most British weather like today, we've got pouring rain. You can't wear it out in that. Um, so it's almost like for a cold winter day. And I loved it. And when I got it out of the wardrobe, it had on the inside and like the, the zip portion, I'll show you, faux leather. So faux pink leather, which is all, so this is what it was supposed to sort of look like. This is the faux pink leather. But it all started to peel off and perish. So you can see the two ends there. I hadn't caught it with anything. I know sometimes if you catch it, it rips and it just all started to perish and go funny. Um, and it was on the inside as well of the jacket. So it was on these panels all the way down. Um, so I've, I've picked it all off and rubbed off all like the under glue. So it just looks beige now on the inside instead of this nice lining. Um, and what I sat last night was I sat and unpicked this. So this was where the zip was attached to, to sort of form a middle piece and a middle section. Also so that the fur doesn't catch when you're trying to zip it up and down. So I sat there and unpicked both sides of the jacket, which then meant unpicking the zip out of the jacket as well. Um, and then I have decided to put the zip back in and see if I could use it. Because I had a bit of wiggle room in the jacket, it wasn't super tight. Um, it's a size, it's an old fashioned size 10, well that is now, God knows. Um, so this is what I spent my morning doing. I got my sewing machine out, which meant I had to move all of my working from home set up because that's now set up on the craft table. Um, and yeah, take all that off, put my sewing machine on. And so, so it was all pinned last night. I mean, it's not the greatest sewing, but I have sewn the zip back in there so it's just attached to the fur and the un underlining i suppose the back of that that faux leather that's all perished so that's one side i've gone all the way up and then this side was more difficult because the fur was it was sort of layered over the top so i've had to try and fold the fur in and catch all that in as well so this is the other side all sewn back in so I have had to give some of the fur a bit of a haircut because it kept catching in the zip. But this is the fur coat. Right, excuse my head, you'll lose my head. So I'm going to do it up. And here we are, look. Zips all the way up. So where I've given the fur a bit of a trim, it zips better open and close. It, will, it kept getting stuck. And it's got pockets. This is what I love about this coat as well. But it's, if you can see... You don't have touch vision, but it's super, super soft. So hopefully it doesn't look too bad on the front here. This is not where I've sewn. Or is it where I've sewn? No. No, I have not sewn here. This is just the natural natural pattern in the fur. This I've sewn very close here. So hopefully it doesn't look too bodged. Um, I think the bottom is slightly out. Only ever so slightly. But yeah. I mean, it would have ended up in the bin. And I thought if I ruined it this morning, what's the worst that could happen? It was already ruined with all of this pink faux. I mean, I know it doesn't look great with that, but actually if I'm wandering out and about, I'll probably have it done up to here. Keep me nice and, nice and warm. And then, yeah, who's gonna see that when you open it? And there we go. So the coat is all, you know, We've bodged it a bit, but it's fixed. So that's what I spent my morning this morning doing. Um, oh, and now look, I've just noticed there's a bit that's popping out here. Can you see? Gonna have to try and unpick that and sew that manually because I've put all the sewing machine away now. 
this is what's difficult trying to catch it all in and i've not caught that bit in so that'll be a hand sew job in a sec it's very annoying because i thought i did all that it's very very tight in there trying to fold it in and sew it so i'll do that bit by hand but yeah it could have been thrown away but we thought we'd fix it anyway i'm gonna go off and do that now <laughs> It's disappointing because I'd rather it be properly sewn with the machine, but I can't get all my machine out again. I'm going to have to unpick that and just hand stitch it. Should be fine. Should be fine. Um, yeah, make do and mend. Um, but that's it from me for this week. Um, sorry for rambling on. It's a bit of a longer video than I was going to do. Um, but yeah, have a good rest of your Easter weekend. I'll pop in some links for Toft, etc. And we coo for their sale. Um, yeah, so enjoy the rest of your bank holiday today if you're not working. And I will catch you all again next time. Take care. Bye.